Hey guys, this is Will from Loops and Worship, and I want to show you how I'm using my iPad 2 to control Ableton Live. So I've got my iPad 2, I'm running Touch OSC, which is I believe like a $5 app for the iPad, and I'm using the Live Control template, uh, which is a free template for uh, your computer, a free template for Touch OSC. So it takes a little bit of configuration, which uh, hopefully we get through this video. If we get enough response, I'll... Um, Throw up a video just showing how, showing you how to, to set this up. Really, really simple to use. But I've used this for a couple services now and really enjoyed uh, working with it. Now, when I pair it with my iClip from IK Multimedia where I can set my iPad on my mic stand, I'll show that to you guys a little later. Um, it's just a killer, killer setup. So I'm going to take you through a little bit of it, how I'm using it, uh, what kind of cool stuff we can do. The first thing you see in Live Control is you see this launcher view. And basically what this is, is this is a visual representation of what we see in session view. So if you take a look at my screen here in session view, you see the different tracks that I have. Um, you see the different scenes that I have. You see these scenes are named. But what's great about this is Live Control is going to give me visual feedback. So I see that scene one here uh, is intro one, and I see that name set up. What's really cool, I don't know how they did it, but somehow they kind of smash uh, your scene names together, clip names together when it doesn't fully fit there. So uh, this scene, you can see it here, is called All of My Life. Over on the iPad, you see it looks like A-L-L-F-M-Y. So um, it's just you know kind of smushed together, but at least I get a basic idea of what that is. So what's great is I get a visual representation of what session view looks like on my iPad. Now this is kind of similar to APC 40 for those of you guys that have worked with a 40 or a Launchpad before where we see our clips. Um, I think they're set up in rows of seven, I think is how many rows we have here. Um, and so we can kind of jump around and scroll around here. What's nice is if I use my shift button, I can go down, uh, looks, I think it's one clip at a time. Um, and we get this little red ring, which is going to show me uh, what scene I'm currently on. So I see that over here in my scenes. Same thing for clips. I can move left or right um, in session view to see different clips if I want to. Uh, really, really neat. But what's great about this to me is I can go in and I can launch individual clips. So let's just launch a couple here. Uh, see if we can get a song going. So I can bring that in. I can bring a drum kit in. You see it flash and it's giving me visual representation of everything that's happening here. Let's add a pad section in. Okay. Um, and so I'm kind of building um, my arrangement on the fly, which is nice. Uh, if I need to turn my metronome on, I can hop over to my mixer section. There's metronome on. Turn that on. Okay. Uh, if I need to stop it, I can press stop. If I want to start it up again, I can start it with my metronome on, uh, which is really, really great. So back over in the launcher, if I want to launch full scenes though, let's go right into our full intro. Okay, we hear our bass parts come in, drum parts in there. Everything's kind of cranking, everything's going good. Now what's nice about this uh, specific arrangement is I do have some follow actions. Um, actually, this one I don't. I don't have follow actions happening. But what you see is we see which scene is playing. Um, by the, the clips that are selected here, they're highlighted. I could go in and stop these individual, uh, individual clips if I wanted, I'll stop my pad. So here we just have the um, bass going. I can go over, I see two different type of bass parts happening. Let's take out the low bass. We just kind of have that rhythmic bass happening. Um, so this is really, really cool to control your mix to kind of go crazy. I can change my tempo on this uh, by tapping. Let's see what we can get. Okay. It's going to kind of average those out. I didn't change much. If I need a little fine tune adjustment of that, I can hold shift here, go tempo up. Okay, get up to 120. Um, really, really cool. Okay, so we'll go in and stop this now. What's really neat about this though too um, is I also get visual feedback going from my computer to my iPad, not just the iPad to the computer. So I can launch uh, intro one, we're at 120. Um, let's go over to my computer. And I'm gonna launch a verse. Let's launch the chorus part, okay? So I'm gonna launch that. We'll see it getting queued up, okay? And now we're we're launching this, okay? Uh, really, really cool how this works. Let's drop down to the um, all of my life section. Okay, we go right to it. See, it got queued up there. Now we're launching it. We're playing all the clips that are here in the all my life section, which looks like just a couple. But what's really neat about this? I'm gonna go up to a higher section, okay? Uh, let's drop our tempo back down. It's weird to 
I hear this at 120, so I'll get back to, I think 111 is what I have that at. Um, again, I'm doing pretty much controlling everything about live with the iPad now. What's great is this is really great to mix too. So I can go in and let's solo here, just the pad section, okay? I can bring the pad down if I need to. Um, I can bring the pad up. What's nice is we kind of get uh, a little more movement. We don't have to stay within these lines to mix my pad, for instance. So I can solo it out where you can hear it. If I touch this fader, and then I can go up, I can go down, I can kind of use the whole iPad as a way to adjust that, which is kind of nice. I get more resolution than just what's given here. Um, we can adjust multiple parts at once, kind of grab those, which is really, really nice. Uh, we can mute sections, uh, we can arm sections. Really, really cool the stuff when you do. But again, the visual feedback thing is great. So if I go into live, uh, let's watch this track right here, that volume fader. If I adjust the fader here, uh, on my live screen using my computer, we see it gets adjusted here. Um, same thing with this kit, same thing with this guy. So it works both ways. So what's great is whatever is showing here is what's actually happening in my live screen. Okay, so I can bring those back up. Um, this is great if you don't have a controller to mix with. You can really mix things on the fly here, um, which is really, really nice. I can also go into device view. You see this 80s pad heaven. Um, this is one of our sounds from our textures collection. I think this is the sound I'm working with here. Let's check it out. Um, okay, so I can go in and get it selected. I can adjust my reverb on it. Um, okay, here it's getting a little crazier sounding. Uh, I think that's my volume. Adjust the space, adjust the release of it can adjust the attack of it. Um, any parameters that we have mapped uh, to that device, we can kind of adjust and change right here. And again, we get the same high resolution thing where we can move all the way around our iPad to make those adjustments, which is really cool. You see on this track here, um, I can move left to right to select my different devices, different tracks. So I could go and adjust my um, kick if I wanted to, my low kick patch right here. But I'm gonna go back to the 80s pad. On the 80s pad, I have my different devices here. I have a filter, so let's bring our frequency down a little bit. I can adjust all that, it's a completely different sound. Uh, my compressor, which I think I'm doing a side chain. Uh, yeah, you can definitely hear I'm doing the side chain. Okay, so there we go, adjust our output gain. Um, do lots of really, really cool, crazy stuff here. Um, adjust my reverb again if I wanted to adjust my compressor, adjust my filter. Eventually go back to my 80s pad heaven. Um, I can turn the device on and off here. What's also nice is I can lock this device to where even if I move tracks um, and jump around on my computer, it's gonna stay with this device loaded up. Now if I take unlock off, you see as I jump around, um, the, the iPad is gonna change to whatever device is currently loaded into that track, which is really, really nice. Now I'll show you one other really cool thing. If I um, stay on our, let's change it up. Let's go to our solid lead track. Okay, so I'm gonna go to device. We see that loaded in. Um, I've got it locked. I'm gonna go ahead and arm that. So I'm gonna go over here, solid lead. I'm working on track, uh, what is this, eight. So I want to record arm this. I'm gonna solo it and unsolo that one. So now let's hear what that sounds like. Okay, so I get some keys to play pads with. You see, we jump over here to the key section. I can play some drum stuff. Let's go uh, switch devices. Let's go left to get to our drum kit. Okay, just so I can see, this one's a good one. Uh, I want to arm that. So that is track three. I'm going to solo and arm, disarm those, go to my drums. Okay. And we hear all those sounds. I can go octave down. There we go. There's our kick sound, some other sounds I can go octave up if I want to. Again, I can make some adjustments to some of those macros that are mapped here. Um, really, really cool stuff. The other thing I can do is use my XY pad here. I don't use this a lot, um, but it'd be really cool to do some filter sweeps. So you can um, map different parameters depending on the device you're on. So let's see, um, I think I have, I may have a device loaded in my master track that could be kind of cool for this. Let's see, master limiter. Okay, Let's see, no, it doesn't look like I do. So what we could do, um, I could go to solid lead sample. You see all the different options I have here, and let's play that. Um, 
once again, let's go back to solid lead. Let's get a clip where that is playing. It looks like I don't have anything loaded in. Let's go to um, maybe our pad sound here, okay? Go back there. And then in our XY pad, let's go to the left till we get our pad patch. Go one more. There we go, okay. So what I could do is I could map um, for XY to space, so then I'll also map uh, my release, okay? So then what I do is I can kind of sweep that with a nice little XY pad, which is really, really cool. So there's a lot of movement we can get out of this. And again, I don't use this a whole lot, but for filter sweeps, um, you could do some really, really neat things. And again, if I open this up, let's just open up these parameters where you can see it. You'll see these uh, automated release in space and I'm controlling them with XY. You see those moving. So as it corresponds on my iPad, it moves there as well. And again, remember we have full control over our volumes and we see that move on our computer. Tons of really, really cool stuff and I can press stop. So that is live control template running on Touch OSC for the iPad 1, iPad 2. And again, I believe it's uh, I use on my iPhone too. You can use it on a iPod. Um, really, really great template, really great way to control Ableton Live with your iPad. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below the video. Leave a comment on the blog. Check out our site, loopsandworship.com. Um, send me any questions you have over email, will at loopsandworship.com. Um, I'm an Ableton certified trainer. I teach live all the time, and I'm always answering questions, and would love to answer any questions you guys have. So, again, Touch OSC, running live control, controlling Ableton Live. Um, really, really fun stuff. Make sure you guys check it out.